Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the most controversial topics that I think um, is in dentistry, and that is root canal therapy. Uh, if you go online or read several books, um, there's a lot of uh, bad things that are said about root canal therapy. Uh, some are valid, some not so valid. So today we'd like to clear up some of the confusion and introduce people to a new way to perform root canal therapy that is both holistic uh, and healthful and a way to keep your teeth um, because the, the other alternative is to extract them. Okay, so here we go. So this is a typical x-ray of a root canal. As you can see, this is the tooth, the top is the crown, and inside where the nerve normally lives is a, is a, a material that's seen on x-rays, and usually you see these are the white lines. Um, and that's a typical x-ray. So when a lot of you go on, online or read books about root canal therapy, about the controversies of root canal therapy, you begin to wonder, what did dentists put in your mouth? And this is something that many people are very concerned about because as we're learning more and more about the toxicity of synthetic materials, about the interaction of unnatural materials in your mouth, uh, we're beginning to learn how much harm it can do. So as dentists of the 21st century, I think it's our responsibility to help our patients choose better, healthier, longer-lasting restorations. Okay, so what are the major arguments against um, root canal therapy? Well, one of the four common, common uh, arguments that I hear all the time is that, well, teeth are dead, they're full of bacteria, they release toxins into the body, and they cause cancer or other diseases. So today we're going to dissect all these uh, different um, arguments and go one by one. So let's start with the dead tooth. So the thing is, teeth are not alive or dead. Dead is really, I think, a very poor choice of words <clears throat> because it doesn't really describe what is going on. It just gives it a name and then based on that name, some people have extrapolated um, into areas that really make no sense at all biologically. But if you don't really understand biology or tooth anatomy or human biology, uh, some of the stuff on the surface seems logical. But if you know a little bit more, uh, you see that it really is not logical at all. So what's inside the tooth? Inside the tooth is a nerve uh, blood vessel and connective tissue system. And basically the nerve functions uh, as an alarm system to the, to the brain and it tells people, um, gives an idea of what's going on in the tooth. So unfortunately the nerve, the type of nerve uh, fibers that are in the tooth uh, only feel one thing and that is pain. Um, so if you if a wind, little wind blows on the nerve, pain. Tickle, pain. Touch the nerve, pain. You look at the nerve, pain. Always pain. That's the only thing the nerve feels. And inside the, the tooth, uh, collectively called the pulp of the tooth, is basically blood vessels supporting the nerves and connective, connective tissue holding it all together. Okay. Uh, there are other, um, what we would call non-vital body parts in the mouth that have no blood vessels or nerve endings going into them. Um, that is hair and nails. And so, so if you have a problem with quote-unquote uh, dead things on your body and you know defining dead as not having nerves in them, um, which obviously is a very simplistic uh, definition, then you should really pull all your hair and nails out as well because that's dead too. Well, that's of course is silly. Um, you would, no one would ever do that. And the, the truth is that, that teeth, once the nerve is removed from the tooth, the tooth still functions like a tooth. It's a very unique body part. So let's look at the nerve. So right here is a typical picture of a tooth that we normally see in textbooks on the internet. 
um, you have basically nerve going into the into the roots of the teeth and above the roots there's a pulp chamber and that's where uh, a lot of the tissue resides so this is this this simplistic two-dimensional picture um, really doesn't tell us the true story in reality the nerve system is a very complex system um, you can see a little bit better here this is a 3d rendering still two-dimensional but a 3d rendering of the nerve you could see nerves have little uh, bifurcations at the tips of the roots. Sometimes the nerves come together and split off. It's a very complicated three-dimensional system. And the system is based on a very common theme we see in nature. So the nerves and teeth are built very similarly like trees are done. You have a main trunk and either the root system or the branch system where it branches or it splits into many many little tiny branches and the nerve is very much the same way you have a main trunk and at the usually at the very tip but not always you could see it higher up here or higher up here you could have uh, parts of the, of the nerve branching off and it is the branching that's the challenge and we'll go into that a little bit later in the lecture so before we go into root canal therapy a little deeper, I just want to talk about this. Rubber dam isolation. <coughs> Excuse me. Rubber dam isolation is mandatory for, during root canal therapy. Unfortunately, a lot of dentists skip the step because either they're in a hurry or they're just not good at putting rubber dams on or for whatever reason. Whatever the reason is, it's irrelevant because it's not the standard of care. The reason we place a rubber shield over the tooth is so that the bacteria-rich saliva does not contaminate the sterile tooth environment that we have achieved or going to achieve. So if you go to a dentist who's doing root canal therapy and they're not putting a rubber dam on, get out of the chair because they're practicing below the standard of care and you should wonder what other procedures they're doing below the standard of care. Okay? Don't be a victim of bad dentistry. Okay. So, the truth is, dentists could only mechanically remove the main trunk. And this is done by instruments called files, which basically ream out or remove the, the tissue. That's how it's been always done in dentistry. And then you're, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, well, how does he clean the rest of the tooth? How do, how do the rest of the little branches are cleaned by dentists? Well, the only means dentists have been using uh, generally over the past several hundred years is chemical means. And one of the most popular agents is sodium hypochloride, a.k.a. Clorox bleach. And it may be a little bit shocking for many of you to know, but most dentists go to their local supermarket and buy Clorox bleach or some other bleach, and they use that inside your teeth to help to digest any tissue inside the tooth. Okay, and so if, if some of you have smelled Clorox bleach during your root canal therapies in the past, you are not crazy, all right? So let's talk about the bacteria problem. Well, here's the problem. Conventional root canal approach does not remove all the bacteria from, and tissue from the tooth. It just doesn't that penetrate that deep into the tooth. And since mechanical instrumentation only removes the main trunk, and sodium hypochloride is not great at removing all the tissue, bacteria can and do survive in the side branches of the tooth where not only bacteria can be left but actually remnants of the organic tissue which is food for the bacteria uh, in the tooth and also in the dental tubules and here's an example of dental tubules under uh, scanning electron microscope pictures you could see these are the actual this is the wall of the tooth and these are the actual little tubules that go inside the tooth and you could see a this, these are yeast and these are bacteria and you could see this is a close-up view of a dental tubule 
with a bacteria, just you know, lots of bacteria sitting inside of it. You could see if you know one dental tubule, you could probably put 10 to 15 bacteria across side to side. So bacteria are tiny. Okay. So in our practice, we have um, eliminated, we've basically um, eliminated chemical means of disinfection because they're so poor. In our practice, we have put together a triple disinfection protocol using modern techniques and technologies. We use two different types of lasers, the Erbium YAG laser and the Antiag laser to fully sterilize the tooth, including the side branches um, and the dental tubules. And then we follow that up with ozone gas. Okay, arguably, it is probable that any one of these procedures is adequate enough to remove all the bacteria and the tissue from the tooth. However, because in my practice, we have all three technologies, we use all three. It's like belt, suspenders, and suspenders approach. <laughs> okay, so the triple disinfection protocol is vital to the success of our um, disinfection of the tooth. And just to kind of show you a little bit about the Erbium Lag PIPS protocol, and PIPS stands for Photon Induced Photoacoustic Streaming. And basically, the laser energy is used to create a sonic boom inside your, the tooth, and these waves of energy that are created rip apart any organic, all organic matter, including bacteria, yeast, um, and everything else, leaving the natural tooth structure behind. And this is an animated uh, uh, cartoon of the process. Here we go. Here we have a 3D rendering showing the PIPS protocol. This unique tip design is lowered into the coronal portion of the tooth being endodontically treated until the tapered and stripped portion only is submerged into the fluid filled access opening. Note that it is not necessary to place the tip down into the actual canal. This first SEM photo shows the smear layer present immediately following canal preparation after conventional filing. As we continue virtually downward into the canal, note that the placement of the PIPS tip stays stationary above the canal. The laser energy is activated into the tip creating a series of shock waves traveling down the entire root canal system to its apical terminus. As this photon-induced photoacoustic streaming activity of the PIPS mechanism continues, a flushing of smear layer and debris can be seen exiting upward from the canal up into the access opening in the coronal aspect of the tooth. This action has been demonstrated over and over in both experimental test models and clinical trials during the irrigation portion of treatment. The resulting surfaces shown by RSAM studies have demonstrated extremely clean surfaces that leave the dentinal wall surfaces uniquely intact. In fact, due to the non-ablative and remote, distant from the apex, mechanism of action with the PIPS laser protocol, RSAM microscopy has demonstrated both hydroxyapatite and even collagen fibers to remain intact and undisturbed morphologically. Traveling further down the canals, we see evidence of lateral canals that are well cleansed and void of tissue and smear layer. The remaining canal preparations show efficacious removal of debris from the entire canal system. This process can be done with less need for over-instrumentation and is extremely minimally invasive. The final preparations offer the clinician a more biomimetic surface for obturation and restorative adhesion. Okay. And this is a demonstration in real life in a tooth model showing how the laser energy is able to clean all the side branches down the very tip of the tooth just by keeping the, the tip of the laser in the top section. And I'm going to fast forward to this video a few times just to show you. It is a longer video as you can see as we progress. And within about a minute and a half, the entire system is clean. So by a minute and 30 seconds, it's perfectly clean. Okay? So let's talk about the NDAG deep disinfection protocol of dentin walls. So while the Erbium YAG laser does this already, uh, because we own two, t actually we own more than 
uh, two types of lasers, but the the because we own the NDAG laser as well, it gives us another layer of disinfection. So this is a different type of laser with different types of um, uh, outcome, and what this laser does, it creates like a almost like a like a heat, a gentle heat um, bubble that kills all the bacteria without damaging the bone and the gum and the tooth uh, adjacent uh, to the energy bubble. Okay, So it penetrates uh, a thousand uh, microns into the tooth. It induces, um, uses um, maximum temperature pulsing for eliminating bacteria and like I said there's no collateral damage. And the third layer of our disinfection protocol is ozone. So ozone is, is, is very interesting. It was used a lot uh, before the antibiotic era and before the American Medical Association and the medical establishment in the United States as a whole basically shunned ozone. Um, you know, one has to wonder if there's other motivations behind that, like big pharma. Um, because ozone's relatively cheap, uh, it's not that hard to make, and it is incredible at killing all single cell germs, including bacteria, fungi, yeast, parasites, and even prions. <clears throat> okay, it's, it's safe to eukaryotic cells, which are human cells as well, and um, ozonated water, um, the water is actually imbued with ozone by bubbling ozone gas through it. Uh, then we actually rinse out the tooth with this ozonated water. Once uh, the tooth is dried, we actually use ozone gas fumigation. We flood the tooth with ozone gas to fully sterilize uh, the tooth, including the dental tubules. And so once the tooth is completely sterilized, we got to seal it against bacteria invasion. And while there are many, many sealing approaches and techniques in dentistry, uh, what we use is we use a biocompatible, non-toxic, antibacterial cement called a bioceramic cement or bioceramic sealer. Okay, it's a non-toxic material which actually bonds or, or adheres to the tooth surface and it's really great. It has a very low molecular weight and it has a very great um, penetrating ability into all the little side branches and the little tubules. And then we use a natural natural um, polymer um, to adhere the cement to. Um, it's similar to gutta percha, but it, it's not. It doesn't have the toxic cadmium in it, and it actually has some of the bioceramic uh, sealer technology imbued into it. That way, the polymer, uh, the natural polymer, is bonded to the bioceramic cement which is bonded to the tooth, and this creates what we call a monoblock, a fully adhered system. Okay? And these are just, these are, these are two-dimensional x-rays, but you could see in these two-dimensional x-rays, and the, the close-ups are on the bottom, how well we're able to clean the canal system, and at the very tip, you could see all the little branches being filled in. Okay, and if you look, these are three examples. <coughs> excuse me, of this three-dimensional filling or sealing of the canal system. This is rarely seen in conventional root canal x-rays. So once we got the root sealed, what happens next? Well, con in conventional dentistry, what is typically done, and this is done routinely throughout our country and the world, what's done is once the roots are sealed, a cotton is placed into the chamber and a temporary filling is placed on top. And the patient's told to come back at a later date, days, months, years later, to get the tooth fully restored with a crown or a filling. Okay? So what's the problem with temporary fillings? What's the problem with this whole approach? The problem is that all temporary fillings leak. That means once you take the rubber shield off and you close your mouth, the leakage and the bacterial recontamination of the inside of the tooth begins. The bacteria saturate the cotton 
and you have this big, wet, soaking, sopping, smelly, bacteria-filled cotton pellet inside the tooth, which is just feeding bacteria into the tooth. And what studies show that within 25 days, that bacteria will have traveled down through the cement um, into the tip of the tooth and out into the bone. And that is why we see reinfections or non-healing infections around root canal treated teeth that are done in this manner. And just a few months ago, one of the leading journals in dentistry showed on its cover, this is the cover, and this is the various temporary fillings, this is called uh, India Ink Studies, which shows how the, the ink actually penetrates all these temporary fillings. So all temporary fillings leak. And that is a huge problem because even if you're if, even if you're able to achieve a fully disinfected tooth by doing this approach, you will recontaminate and all your work has gone down the tubes and all the money and time and effort that was spent to do the root canal is down the drain. A waste of time. Horrible. Okay. And the last, the last argument against a root canal therapy is, well, even if you seal the tooth adequately from all ends and even if you... Um, seal the tooth and get all the bacteria out of there. Even after that, well, eventually the bacteria from inside the body will recontaminate and reinfect the tooth. Well, that sounds great if you have no understanding of human anatomy, human biology, and tooth anatomy, and tooth morphology, because that just uh, cannot happen. It's not biologically possible for three reasons. One is cementum. Cementum is a hard covering of the outside of the root, the part that's in the bone and in the gums. Okay, It's a hard concrete, that's why it's called cementum, covering. Bacteria cannot penetrate this covering because if it did, all your teeth will always be contaminated and infected, but they're not. It doesn't happen in humans. It doesn't happen in any other animal with teeth. And that's because of the cementum. So that's number one. Number two, inside the tooth, you have to remember, we have a monoblock cohesive unit that has sealed the inside of the tooth. So even if the bacteria got through somehow, they couldn't get through the sealed tooth. And here's a, a scanning electron microscope rendering of this cementum layer. As you can see, it's unidirectional crystal. Okay. Okay, so what is our solution to this root canal problem? Well, we've been developing this technique over, over many years with great success, and as we add another layer uh, of technology and techniques and improve, using better and better materials as they become available, our success rates are reflecting that. They're climbing, they're getting better, in fact, at this point in time, the only root canal failure we see in our practice is from teeth that had undiagnosed cracks inside of them or cracked after root canal therapy for a whole variety of reasons. So the solution, again, just to kind of reiterate, is to seal the tip of the tooth with biocompatible non-toxic cements under rub and dam isolation. And seal the top of the tooth with a bonded adhesive core. I'm going to talk about it a little further down the line. Okay. So biocompatible root canal therapy removes all the bacteria and nerve tissue using PIPs, NDAG, and ozone therapy under rubber dam uh, isolation. The tooth is then sealed with a non-toxic cement and bioceramic gutta percha. 
and the tooth is sealed on top with biomimetically bonded resin composite core under rubber dam during the same visit. In other words, the tooth is sealed from the tip to the top. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk, talk to you about is do root canals cause diseases including cancer? And probably the most famous article that's been quoted by a lot of people, including Dr. Mercola, who I highly respect, um, is, is this 97% um, article. And the article basically says that, that when they took patients with breast cancer, 97% of them had root canal therapy. And so, of course, everyone says, aha, that's proof. The problem with the study, as is the problem with all studies of this nature, is that it's not an aha. It, it's not the purpose of the study. The purpose of e epidemiologic correlation studies, and let's define that first. Epidemiologic correlation studies go something like this. They take thousands of people, the large body of people, and they ask them to fill out a questionnaire. And a lot of these studies are done uh, usually with diet studies. They do something like this. Okay, so tell us how much meat you ate over the past 10 years, and tell us how much vegetables you ate over the past 10 years, and then we're going to follow you for the next 20 years and see what you die of, and we're going we're gonna to say, aha, if people who ate a lot of meat got a lot of stomach cancer, that must be, you know, there you go, proof. But the truth is, these studies aren't proof of anything. All these studies do is show a correlation. That means when we see A, we see B. It doesn't say that A causes B or B causes A. It just means they're found together. I'll give you examples of correlation studies which are nonsensical because you know they are because you have common sense. So at any given time, at any burning house, there are firemen around on the scene while the house is burning. So using the same logic, you would say, we find firemen at the scene of a fire. Aha, firemen caused the fire. Now that's illogical and silly, yet we do the same thing for many other studies of this nature. The only thing correlation studies show us or tell us is it gives us a means to form a hypothesis. So, in order to make this study that Dr. Mercola uh, touts valid is to say, okay, because we see that in 97% of people with breast cancers, they also have root canal therapy, let's devise an experiment, a true scientific double-blind experiment that proves this. No such experiment has been ever done proving anything. So we cannot take this study at face value. We, call, we could only say it's possible, but the probability of it is unknown. So these are, I would say, careless uh, conclusions that are made using studies that don't show much except a correlation, but not causality. Okay? So do I think root canals cause cancer? I don't know, because no study has ever shown me one way or the other. But I, what I do know is this. If you have a chronic infection in your body, which often occurs when root canal treated teeth are not treated properly and bacteria are left inside the tooth and bacteria do uh, come out of the tooth and infect the bone and destroy the bone and the toxins do come out of the tooth. Um, all I know is this, that it's another level of burden that the body has to deal with. And if your body's fighting off an infection somewhere else, or if your body's dealing with an ailment, or if your body's trying to heal, or if your body's trying to deal with cancer, and you have a tooth that's infected and it's leaking bacteria and other yuck into your body, and your body's dealing with that again on, on a different front, if you mean, if you will, 
I think the body the body can get overburdened and can and its ability to fight off other diseases um, is not optimized. So I definitely think that getting rid of chronic debilitating infections from your body is a good idea because it allows gives your body it, resources to put into dealing with other disease states. So while I don't know if root canals cause cancer, I do know that non-healing infected teeth can put an additional burden on the body. How much of a burden and what are the, what's the consequences of that burden is hard to say and hard to measure. So I do think root, failing root canal teeth should be addressed. Okay? Something to think about. Okay. <coughs> so we're, we're about a half an hour into the lecture. And what I'd like to talk to you about is an alternative to root canal therapy. Um, this is a technique that we use routinely in our practice to help our patients avoid root canal. So, very often, a patient comes into the dentist without any symptoms or a little bit of symptoms. We take an x-ray and we see a gigantic cavity that is in the proximity of the nerve. And right away, every dentist has a knee-jerk reaction, says, ah, oh, you need a root canal. And the truth is, they're not wrong, because that's how we're being taught. That is the standard of care, if you will. However, just because the bacteria or the decay has reached the, the nerve or is in very close proximity to the nerve, does not mean your body cannot heal. And it actually can heal if we give it the right environment and the right opportunity. So the old strategy is to remove all the decay, no matter what, even if we expose the nerve. And if we expose the nerve, pretty much 99% of the time, it's root canal city. The strategy that we employ is a little different. We put the tooth through a series of tests. And if the tests show us that the nerve inside the tooth is healthy, it's vital, that means if we can create a situation where we remove the bacterial load on the tooth and let the tooth naturally heal, the nerve can be healed and the nerve can survive and you do not need a root canal. Okay, but in order to achieve this, you need the right technology, unfortunately. So the new strategy is to remove most of the decay, leaving a little bit of the deep decay in the tooth that's in close proximity of the nerve. That way we do not violate the nerve. Then using ozone therapy to disinfect and sterilize the tooth, and then using a technology that allows us to visually see if all the bacteria has been killed to confirm that. And then covering the sterilized decay with a material that will help the decay to remineralize, reharden, or heal, and to build new sound tooth structure. And then restore the tooth. So that's our strategy. And I'll show you a little bit of it. So here we're doing ozone fumigation, and like we talked about before, ozone kills germs, including bacteria, parasites, yeast, fungi, and even prions. It penetrates deeply into the tooth, and it effectively sterilizes decay. And we use a spectra system, which gives you a visual um, and a numerical sign of decay. And here's what it looks like. So when we clean out the decay, uh, we put the spectra system on, you could see it, it looks red, um, either by removing it mechanically or using ozone, we get to this green state where all the bacteria has been killed. Okay, 
This is how I know that all the bacteria has been killed. And it can take some time. It can take between 5 to 10 minutes of ozone application. Uh, but it's well, well worth it because we are creating, we're avoiding root canal for our patients. Not only saving our patients money, time, but preserving the vitality of the tooth. Okay? And then we use a new material. It's a resin mod it's a modified calcium silicate. Um, and it's been studied, this specific material that we use has been around for about 10 years uh, in clinical uh, trials. It's, it's developed by one of the most uh, well-respected dental companies in the world. And it has many studies behind it showing its efficacy, and it works. Uh, and it's been really uh, godsend uh, in dentistry, at least in our practice. Okay, and then the final step is biomimetic tooth reconstruction, um, which is basically rebuilding the tooth using materials that mimic the natural structure of the tooth. That way, our restorations work in harmony with the tooth, in harmony with nature, and not against it. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Um, if you like, you're able to to contact me through email at smithtownsmiles at cs.com. You can find us on YouTube. Just type in my name into the YouTube uh, search. You'll find our YouTube channels where other videos like this uh, are up there and you could continue your dental education in holistic dentistry. Thank you.